What's happening? My name is Max. This looks pretty good. This whole thing is shot on the iPhone 14 Pro Max. 4K, 24 frames per second cinematic mode. And I think it's doing a pretty good job. So at this time, I've been using the iPhone 14 Pro Max since launch day. So it's been out for about two weeks at this time. And while it's not a huge upgrade, it's really, it feels a lot more like an S model upgrade if you remember those. I've definitely been enjoying using it. And so far, I don't think I regret the upgrade. So for 90% of people probably, cameras are gonna be the biggest reason why you would wanna upgrade from an older iPhone to the newer one, or even an Android phone to a newer iPhone. You see how much of an emphasis Apple puts on the cameras. You see how many YouTube videos come up with camera tests, iPhone versus this versus real camera versus phone camera versus last year's camera. I know I'm gonna be doing a couple soon, so if that's something you do wanna see, you know, you could help a small channel out and subscribe if you wanted to. Your cameras are gonna be what people notice as the biggest change usually. So let's start with that. In no particular order, upgrade number one for the cameras, they're better in lower light. Basically, they let more light in due to the lower aperture and bigger sensor. Big upgrade number two, 48 megapixels. The iPhone's been at 12 megapixels for what feels like forever. So jumping from 12 to 48 sounds like it's a huge, crazy increase. You should be taking like magazine quality pictures, Netflix style videos, crazy. I mean, you're looking at the 4K cinematic mode right now. I've got everything I've used linked down below. But is it that noticeable of an increase? I don't know. I'm putting up a couple pictures here so you can kind of see the difference with a 13 Pro Max versus a 14 Pro Max in the 12 megapixel on the 13 and using the 48 megapixel on the 14. I've got a much deeper in-depth video coming up later. But when you use the 48 megapixel feature, because it's not on by default, you have to turn it on when you want to use it. What it'll do is it'll take the 48 megapixels and divide it into 12 actual sections. So it still works like a 12 megapixel camera when you don't have it turned on. And when you do, it opens up, we'll say, back to the 48 megapixels. I personally do notice a difference when I'm zooming in. If I'm cropping into the image, if I wanna make it look like I'm a little bit closer than I was when I shot it, if I wanna show a little bit more detail, then I definitely do notice a difference. But if they're side by side and you're looking quickly, I don't know if it's as big of a jump as you'd expect. I don't know, you take a look here and let me know in the comments below what you think. Now there definitely are some times when I did notice quite a big difference, especially in lower light, but in like your average use case for a camera, I wasn't noticing a dramatic difference between the two. Not as much as you would expect hearing the numbers 12 and 48. Another massive change to the camera was the addition of both 4K cinematic mode and 24 frames per second and action mode, which I don't know if it's getting as much love as it should be because I that's something that I noticed a difference immediately once I turned that on. Now in the keynote, Apple's comparison looked crazy. It looked like when it didn't have action mode, the guy was, you know, flapping around like this, which it's not that dramatic of a difference unless you turn off all stabilization, which is probably, not probably, which is what they did for that comparison. But if you're just comparing the regular stabilization on a 13, let's say, versus the action mode on a 14 Pro Max, this is what that looks like. And yeah, you can absolutely tell the difference there. Now the one downside is yes, it crops in. It has to in order to stabilize the footage for you. Is it terrible? No, because you can always step back if you have the room. If not, you do have the option of the wide angle lens. You also need a ton of light in order to make it work. So most of these shots are gonna be done outside, which if you think about it, that's probably okay because that's most likely where you'll be doing these action type shots, just running around, jumping, things like that. Maybe you'll do it inside, I don't know, but most places or most cases where I can think of it will be done outside. One more change, the main lens went from 26 megapixels in the 13 Pro to 24 megapixels in the 14 Pro Max. Doesn't sound like it's a huge deal, but it just gives you that slightly wider field of view. In my opinion, I like that a lot because it's one of my favorite lenses. It's what's usually attached to my camera that I actually shoot with is a 24 millimeter lens. I really like that focal length. A lot of people do, it's one of the most popular lenses. Another big change for this year, the always on display. Basically, it's exactly how it sounds. Your display is always on. It dims itself down. Android's been doing this for years. It's very similar to the Apple Watches. If you have one with the always on display, you'll see that 
when you look down at your wrist, you can still see the time, it's just dimmer. That's exactly what your phone's going to do now. Now on an Android phone, usually it's just completely black. All you see is the time, maybe a notification or a widget if you need, if you had one. The way that Apple wants to do it is that your wallpaper is still slightly visible. It just dims itself down really, really dark. It lets you still see what makes your phone your phone instead of looking like everybody else's. Now, some people say it looks a little too bright, which in the beginning, there were a lot of times where I've looked and I've kept hitting the lock button because I didn't think that it was actually locked when it was. You get used to it kind of quickly. Now, I think the biggest reason why Apple did it this way was not, not only because it's their way of doing it, so it's something that makes it different, but it's an easy marketing opportunity for them. Because if you look down at a table and you see somebody's phone has the display still on, it's just darker, that's your immediate cue to know that's an iPhone 14 Pro, not an iPhone 13 Pro. And it'll either start the conversation, hey, what's going on with that? What's up with your phone? Why is it like that? Did you get the new phone? Something along those lines. Free marketing. Now with this, some people have said that their battery life has been terrible on this phone, which I personally have not noticed at all. Admittedly, I have been using my phone a little bit less than I was before with the 13 Pro, but still, I'm able to get through the day with the lowest I've ever gotten was like 28% battery, and that's when I was on it for a while watching a ton of YouTube videos, but otherwise, I can still easily get through the entire day without even touching low power mode. So maybe some people's phones have been having a little bit of a battery issue, but I would expect that to be fixed in a software update. Now the times that the always on display turns itself off are if the phone is face down on a table, if the phone's in your pocket, or I like this one a lot. If you have an Apple Watch and you walk far enough away from the phone, the screen will turn off. And then when you get closer, you'll see the screen turning back on, but not on, on, just the always on display on. It looks pretty cool. It'll also turn all the way off if it's charging overnight and it knows you're sleeping. Again, with the Apple Watch, it'll know that you're sleeping or if you have like a bedtime schedule set up on your phone in the settings, or if you don't touch the phone, I can't remember how long it is, but there's a certain time that if you don't touch the phone, don't use the phone, the screen will just turn itself completely black. Now the feature that got the most hype after the announcement was the dynamic island. Every time I use the phone, I'm looking forward to seeing some kind of animation with the dynamic island, which leads me to my next point. I don't think it's optimized as great as it can be or as great as it will be. This is another thing that I think is gonna to continue to grow with software updates and with other applications being able to use it. The times that it does work, it it's, looks super cool. Your music pops up in the dynamic island. The waveform is color matched to the album art that you're actually listening to hopefully soon with iOS 16.1. More applications will be using it. It'll be just in time for NBA season so you can see the scores on the top. It'll be just in time for the World Series or baseball playoffs so you can see the scores on the island while you're in other applications. It's got a lot of potential. I'd love to see it used a little bit more. Uh, I'd love to see it used a lot more for notifications coming through like text messages, any kind of alerts that pop up as a regular banner notification, I think can be integrated into the dynamic island and that would make it just that more, that much more useful. I find myself looking forward to seeing it being used and then not seeing it being used nearly as much as I would have wanted or would have expected. So it's like a really cool hyped up feature that you don't really get to use or you don't really get to see. So it's kind of like a letdown at that point. At least, you know, maybe I'm the only one. I, I don't know. Let me know if you feel the same way. So in my real world usage over the past two weeks, what have I actually noticed as a difference between a 13 Pro Max and a 14 Pro Max. They feel very similar. They, they feel very similar. The Dynamic Island, I wish could be used a little bit more. The Always On Display is a really cool feature, but that's not worth upgrading for just that. The brightness outdoors is amazing, but I don't use my phone outdoors enough to justify that. So it comes down to the cameras, and honestly, the biggest difference that I notice between the 13 Pro Max and my 14 Pro Max now is that I'm looking more forward to using this phone's camera. And I'm taking it out of my pocket a lot more to use that camera. I'm looking forward to taking more pictures and videos with it. I don't know if that's because I really like the way this camera looks. If it's because I know it has the option for 48 megapixels and I know I can get some amazing images with that, it comes down to the cameras for me. 
with the 14 Pro Max, I find myself looking forward to using the cameras way more than I have with any other iPhone. I find myself taking this out of my pocket to take more photos and videos than I ever was before with any other iPhone. If you're coming from a 12 or older, you'll notice a huge difference. If you're coming from a 13, if you use the camera a lot, it could be worth the upgrade. If you're not a heavy iPhone camera user, maybe hold off, wait for the 15.